Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Our Stony Acres. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about the nine essential tools that I think every gardener should be using. And these are also all of my favorites. And so we're gonna go through the different tools that I think you ought to have to be a successful gardener. Before we get started though, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click that notification bell so you get noticed every time I release new videos. Also make sure you go over and follow us on Instagram. I'd love to have you follow us there. And make sure you stick around at the end of this video. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our free year round gardening mini course. And if you're interested, there's a link down in the description. You can go sign up for this course for free. It teaches you a lot more about growing year round. And I'll talk to you more at the end of the video. All right, so let's get started with my list of tools that I think you guys should be having and, and making sure that you have as part of your gardening efforts. I have nine of them for you. And one of the things that I wanted to start out with is to make sure that you get good, solid quality tools. Pay a little extra money to get the good tools. So this is a good example. It's looking pretty old and pretty beat up now, but this shovel is actually 25 years old. I've had this shovel since we owned a home and uh, it's been around for a long time. It was a gift from my dad and it has lasted forever because it was a good quality tool to begin with, okay? So make sure that you spend a little bit of money. Now, good, nice round nose shovel is actually one of the first tools on my list and uh, one that I think is going to be very important for you to have in your garden. A good round nose shovel is gonna be used for doing a lot of digging, digging holes for trees and bushes. You're gonna use it to, for turning your garden. You're gonna be using it for loading compost and other materials. And so it's just a great tool to have. Again, good quality is important, and then make sure that you keep it sharp. So it's important that you keep a nice edge. We're not talking about a knife edge on this, but, but it is important to have a good sharp edge on your, your shovels. And so if you wanna learn how to do that, I've actually got a video right up here that you can go watch that will teach you how to sharpen your tools. So a good round nose shovel is the first of our nine tools that are important for us to have in the garden. Okay, next on the list is a rake, and not any rake, a good heavy rake. So let me come up close so that you guys can see this. This is a good, you, you wanna get a good quality heavy rake. I use this guy weekly, all year long. Uh, so I'll use it to, you know, occasionally to, you know, clean up a pile or something like that, but I'll use it a lot more for mixing compost into my beds. And then the nice thing about these heavy rakes is, is you can turn them over and they make a really good smoothing tool. So you can, you know, loosen soil and break soil up with it and then turn it over and smooth that tool, that soil out. And so a good quality heavy rake is something that you should definitely have in your garden. You're going to use it a ton. This guy comes out almost every time I'm in the garden. So good one to have. Next on the list is a good quality leaf rake. So I love having a good big leaf rake. It's great for cleaning up big masses of leaves. I'll also use it, you know, to kind of clean things out of my garden at the end of the season. So a good leaf rake is going to be very important for you. Then also to go along with that, and this is probably, you know, tool 3.1 or something, is a good smaller leaf rake. So this one is great for working in your around bushes and shrubs and things like that. Uh, it works really well. It's also good for, you know, like spreading mulches and things like that underneath your plants. Very handy to have. So good quality leaf rake and then a smaller leaf rake are also going to be very important for your garden. Next on the list is a good digging fork. So this is not a pitchfork, this is a digging fork. You notice it's not very long has a, a short handle with a good grip on it that gives you lots of good leverage. I use this tool every week in my garden, especially in the spring and in the fall. So I'll use this to loosen the soil in my garden beds. I'll occasionally use it to turn the soil. I'll use it to help mix compost into my beds. And then it's an invaluable tool for harvesting. So the nice thing about the, these tongs is compared to a shovel, is that uh, you're, you're much less likely when you're harvesting to cut or damage the, the food that you're, you're trying to dig up with one of these. So I'll use this digging fork to harvest all of my root crops. So things like, you know, my potatoes, my carrots, onions, garlic, uh, perfect tool for that kind of harvesting. And it's also really good for, at the end of the season, getting plants out, digging those roots out and, you know, and, and really kind of just digging in and, and doing good. So a digging fork is a great addition to your garden. 
Next on the list is my favorite weeding tool. So this is called a winged weeder. Let me just come in close here so that you can see it. I literally have been using one of these since I was about eight years old. So my dad was a horse trainer and we had a barnyard that he wanted to always be pristine for when the clients came over. And so we were always, that was one of our jobs was to use the wing weeder to go out and make sure that there weren't any weeds going up, growing up in the barnyard. And so I literally have been using this for 40 plus years. I love this tool as a weeding tool. It, it gets down underneath the soil cuts those roots off below the soil surface. It's great for big patches of tall weeds. It's also great for those smaller, low growing weeds. Uh, just a really good tool that I love and have, you know, over the years we've had several different versions of it. Uh, this one, and I'll leave a link for this down in the description below. This one with the metal handle seems to have it's, it's lasting a lot longer than, than any other version that we've ever had before. This one's way more than 10 years old and uh, it, it just is doing great. So again, it's called a winged weeder and uh, my favorite weeding tool by far. We just love having this guy around. Number six on the list is a compost aerator. And this is actually a new tool to me this year and I love it. It's become invaluable very quickly. So this is a compost aerator. It's made by Yard Butler. Uh, they actually sent this to me to try it out with no commitment for me to advertise it at all, but I loved it. Um, it, it is super handy and, and I just really, really like it. So let me show you how it works and I'll do a cutaway too. But see how we have these, these kind of these little wings? This goes in and we, you push that into the compost pile and then you kind of give it a twist and these open up and then you can pull that compost out. And so I'll do a cutaway here so that you can see. It goes down into that compost. You can get it all the way down to the bottom, twist it and then pull up and it helps you to get that compost aerated and that material moved around in the compost pile. I love this tool. And again, I'm not being paid to tell you that I love this tool. Uh, it, it was really, really good. I've included a link to the Yard Butler website so that you guys can go check it out. But this is a great compost aerator. And I, if you're gonna do compost, this is a great thing to have. Okay, the next one on the list also is related to compost and that is a good compost thermometer. So let me kind of show you here. Uh, what this guy looks like. Uh, this is just a nice tool to have if you are into composting. So especially if you're into hot composting, which I am, uh, it's a great way to monitor your pile and make sure that you are keeping that temperature where it needs to be in that 120 to 140 degree range so that you are getting that pile cooking really well. And so it's a great way to monitor, to know when you need to turn, when you might need to add a little nitrogen to the to pile or you know something like that. And so great tool to have. Fairly inexpensive, expect to pay about $20 for these, but a really good composting tool to have in your garden. All right, next is another weeding tool, and this is my dandelion weeder. So let me kind of get up here close and show you this guy. So this is really handy. I don't use sprays in my yard or garden, but I also want to keep my neighbors happy, so I try to keep the dandelions down. And uh, the way this works is you, you stick this guy into here where we've got these forks, you stick that into the ground, in around the dandelion and you kind of go to either side of the stem and then this levers out and it allows you to pull that dandelion out uh, by the root and it, it gets that tap root out and everything and this has been a great addition we we bought this about eight years ago one of our neighbors recommended it to me because he saw me out digging them out with a knife and and so uh, great little tool to help keep the dandelions and other deep tap rooted uh, weeds out of your grass and garden area. So uh, again, just a simple one. You should be able to find these guys at most of your local nurseries. Okay, and last on our list is a good pair of bypass pruners. So again, I'll bring this up close. These are a little dirty. They've been used quite a bit already this season, but um, a good pair of bypass pruners is going to be invaluable for you in your garden. These guys just go in my back pocket all the time, and I literally almost always have these with me. So in the spring, I'm gonna be using these for pruning my fruit trees, pruning my bushes, things like that. Then later on during the season, I'm going to be using these for harvesting a lot of my thicker stemmed plants, even like, you know, things like tomatoes and, and things like that. I'll use this as well. The reason why you want to get a bypass pruner instead of an anvil pruner is because bypass, if you look, 
See how this blade, when you close it, it, it goes past. That's why we call it a bypass. It passes by. And it's what that does is it gives you a good slicing cut instead of a crushing cut. And so a good pair of bypass pruners is going to help the health of your garden. And then it's just going to have to be handy to have. I literally, these are in my pocket almost all the time when I'm out in the garden. So that's number nine on the list. Okay, so there you go. That is my list of the most invaluable garden tools. What did I miss? Anything that you guys use that uh, I didn't include? Or is there something that I included on the list that you think, nah, you don't really need that? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you on that. Before we go, please make sure that you go check out my free year-round gardening mini course. So that is a course that's about 45 minutes long that gives you some of the basics of growing a garden year-round. Now is a great time for you to learn more about year-round gardening. And I have this free 45 minute course is down in the description available for you to go and watch and sign up for. And I would love to have you come and join that little course. So great little course, click on that link down below. Okay, that's all I have for you for this week. Before we go, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click that notification bell so you get noticed every time I release new videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you go over and follow us on Instagram. I would love to have you join us there. All right. That's all I have for you for this week, guys. Everybody have a fantastic week. Happy gardening.